Hello guys and welcome back to Planet 40 King Necron. So in today's video, we've got a unit review. We're going to be talking about the Triarch Stalker, one of our Necron vehicles, a walker. We're going to be giving it a Planet 40 K rating after we've gone through all the data card and all that stuff. But first, a word from another one of our sponsors. So this video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the premium global brand for men's grooming and hygiene. Now, Manscaped have just launched their fourth generation of lawnmower. This is the 4.0, and it's designed for groin grooming. So I'm excited to share this with you today. So we're gonna unbox this and show you what we're all about here. So this trimmer is basically a waterproof trimmer, and it is cordless. The craftsmanship of this lawnmower 4.0 is pretty impressive. It's got the ceramic blades with skin safe technology that's gonna help reduce nicks and cuts to your ball bag. As mentioned, it is cordless and it's waterproof, so you can be taking this in the shower. And in terms of the charge, well, you get 90 minutes of charge, so plenty of time to have a trim. You can customize your preferred hair length with four trimmer guard options. And there's even a travel lock feature just in case this thing goes off in your luggage. So come and join me and over 9 million other men worldwide who trust Manscaped when it comes to grooming solutions for the modern man. They've got other products such as the ball deodorant, the ball toner, and the ball wipes. Manscaped makes it easier to take care of your pair and look after your family jewels. So use discount code PLANETK20, that's PLANETK20 to get a 20% discount on your order of the Lomo 4.0 and this will include free shipping. So the link will be down in the description below and it's manscaped.com. What are you waiting for? So that's Manscaped, make sure you are checking them out in the link down below. Right, Triarch Stalker. Last edition, it wasn't the best unit. I quite liked it with the Silent King in 9th edition. Everything's sort of changed now, isn't it? The My Will Be Done and all that isn't what it is. So let's see how it fares for 10th. So first of all, the rear side of the data card, 125 points, and you're gonna be getting one Triarch Stalker. The model is equipped with the Heat Ray and the Stalker, four limbs, and you can swap out the heat ray for the particle shredder or a twin heavy gorse cannon. Now worth noting, I just said it's 125 points. In 9th edition it was 110 but you did have to pay for the war gear. The most expensive war gear in 9th edition was the twin heavy gorse cannon and that was 15 points so it is effectively the same points cost as if you are paying for the most expensive weapon there. Yeah, it's basically it's the same or you're kind of forced to pay the points. Now as for the keywords before we flip this card over, it is a vehicle, it is a walker, and it's not, a, you know, in, in the previous edition it was a, what was it called now? Was it a dynastic agent? Was that the word? I can't remember. It was a dynastic agent, so it didn't get all the dynasty abilities. That's not a thing anymore. So it gets command protocols and any of the dynasties that we get in our codex coming out later this year. In fact, one more thing relating to the keywords, the walker keyword we can use the hero intervention stratagem with this vehicle, even though it's a vehicle, because it has the walker keyword. We're still not gonna gain the bonuses to the, the charge move for fighting first, but you can do it if you wanted to. So let's look at the statistics to begin. It's nine inches of movement, it used to be 10. Yeah, that's cool. Toughness eight, it used to be six. That's also cool. Three plus armor, the four plus in vulnerable save. Now that, we used to have a five plus in vulnerable save with quantum shielding but we used to not be able to be wounded on less than a four plus. Now we can be just wounded as normal. We have got uh, 12 wounds, seven plus is the leadership and object control is four. So a decent object control there from a sort of a light kind of vehicle. Let's move into the range capabilities to begin. And we're gonna start with that heat ray that it comes stock with. So this comes with two profiles that you have to select before you shoot, either the, the heat ray which is dispersed or the heat ray which is focused. Now the dispersed option ignores cover and it's also torrent, so in fact it's going to be automatically hitting, which is kind of cool. Used to be a heavy in 9th edition, so we've lost the heavy keyword there. 12 inch range, 2d6 amount of shots, or hits even. Strength is 5, minus 1 AP, and 1 damage. So this is a light infantry remover, light screens. You've got a fair amount of shots with it. I mean, on average you're going to get 7 hits with that, with 2d6. Wounded on 3s is what you're likely going to be doing against that kind of target. Minus 1 AP is probably all you need towards that four. Now, if you're gonna use the focused option, which is the, the melter, meltery kind of option, it used to have melt D6, well, it used to be plus two, didn't it? Now it's melter four, so we're gonna get an additional four if we are within half range, cool. Unfortunately, speaking of range, 
it used to be 24 inch range, it's now only 18 inch range. So we've been nerfed in terms of the range because that melter 4 now only applies to 9 inches rather than 12. It is what it is, it is what it is. Now we've got two attacks, split skill 3 plus, the strength has gone up to strength 9. That is kind of standard for 10th edition because vehicles and monsters have gone up in terms of toughness just like this Triumph Stalker has. So strength 9, I mean toughness 9 isn't the, the, the biggest toughness, but like vehicles this will pop it. And probably be wounded on threes as well. Minus four AP is lovely, and the damage is D6. And of course, you've got Melter there if you've been in half range. So a decent weapon, but it's only got two shots, which is my little peeve with that. I wish it just had one extra or something, but it is what it is again. Options: you've got the particle shredder, which is what I used to use in Ninth Edition, but it has all been changed now. So we've got 18 inch. In fact, let me go back a step. We've got blast, which is nice. You've got devastating wounds, which is also nice. 18 inch range. We used to have 8 shots for this, this is why I used to like it because it was cheap in 9th edition where it was the free option and you used to just guarantee yourself getting a hit to get the ability off. This edition you get D6 plus 6 shots. So on average you're going to get more than 8. You're probably going to get 9, probably 10 on average, so that's more shots which is good, it's good. Illicit skill has gone to 2 plus which is also good, I mean is that a particle weapon thing? I thought it was just a pistol thing but maybe it's particle weapons or a 2 plus. So that's, we're hitting much better. Strength 7, minus, no there's no minus, that was a minus 1, it's now 0 AP and it used to be 2 damage, it's now gone to 1. I don't know where I stand on this weapon because everything's great up until the damage. I don't mind the AP being dropped but the damage, it makes you think why would I take this over the heat ray? Because the heat ray is also anti-infantry, it's also 1 damage, you've got the option of the melter version. Yes you've got blast, yes you've got dead wounds but I, I'm not that keen on the particle shredder as I was in 9th edition. The third option is the twin heavy gorse cannon. It's got lethal hits, of course, because it's gorse, gauss, gorse, and it's twin linked. The range has gone down to 24 inch range, it used to be 30. And attacks 3. It used to have 6 attacks, it's now only got 3. Yes, it is twin linked, but with 3 attacks, who cares, really? Blitz skill 3 plus, strength has gone up to 8, minus 2 AP has gone down to 2, and the damage is a flat 2, which was, it used to be D3. Now I'm, <sighs> this is the same weapon as the Locust Destroyers have except it's twin linked. I don't like this weapon at all, the amount of shots is very poor and it just makes you think this, it might even be the worst weapon there you know. At least with the Particle Shredder you've got D6 plus 6 shots. But for me you're taking the Heat Ray, automatically hitting, maybe you're using it in Overwatch, you've also got the Melter option, it's very flexible. For me all day long I'm choosing the Heat Ray. Now as for the right side of the deck, it can't be the abilities, it's got Dilly Demise D3 which is what it pretty much had in 9th edition with Explodes. It's got Reanimation Protocols when of course vehicles used to only have Living Metal, so that's good, that's a definite improvement. And the Targeting Relay which I don't think it's an improvement, but maybe it is, we'll have to see. So in the shooting phase, each time this model is selected to shoot, after resolving the attacks, select one enemy unit that was hit by one or more of these attacks and until the end of the phase, that unit cannot have the benefits of cover. So you're removing cover, whereas in 9th edition you were allowing for an army wide reroll of ones against a specific unit, which was really it was really cool in terms of synergy. Now this edition cover is everywhere. I mean it's so hard to not get cover. You just literally have to put your a model's elbow in cover and then it's not visibly you can't the entire unit can't visibly see the entire model. So therefore it's in cover, which is kind of weird but you know, I suppose it is a neating, neatening of the the rules, so I kind of like that. And by removing cover for the rest of your army, that could be really useful because AP is quite a big thing at the moment because of the big, the big reset. I mean, we've seen it from Illuminazares. He can plus one to AP or minus one to incoming AP, and that's a big deal. And this guy can pretty much do the same thing with Kama. So. That's a, that's a decent ability, so I say it's like a sidestep rather than a downgrade or an upgrade, I think it's a sidestep. Something different I suppose. So let's move into the synergy side of this data card before moving into its battlefield role. So stratagem wise you could use the Pro School of Hungry Void, probably not the best target for this but I'm just showing you this one, plus one to the strength so that will make the Stalker Four Limbs which we totally forgot to talk about but we'll go back now and discuss. Let's go back, you know what, rewind, da -da 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 -da. right. 4 attacks, web skill 3 plus, strength 7, minus 1 AP, 3 damage. We used to have only 3 attacks and it used to be minus 2 AP, it's now minus 1 AP. 
I'm still quite annoyed that we've only got four attacks, even though it used to be three and it's gone up. I think this thing needs more attacks. 125 point model with these spidery legs. I, I don't know. I, I think it should have more. I don't know how. I just feel like it's not enough. It's just not enough. But yeah, sorry for jumping the gun. Let's get back to the protocol hungry void. So you can plus one to the strength of that weapon. So that would make it strength eight. And if it was being led, you get an extra bit of AP, which is no leaders for it, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Protocol of Conquering Tyrants, we have to re-roll your wound rolls at range. So again, that could be your heat ray. You're also hitting and you could be re-rolling all your wound rolls. You're not going to be using this for the twin heavy gorse cannon because of course that's twin links, so you don't need it there. You've then got the Protocol of Sun Storm to add the assault keyword to your weaponry. So you can still shoot and then advance with it. Or advance and then shoot with it. That's only going to be useful if you need to make some ground up and you know you're not going to get into a charge, into an engagement range. You've also got some core stratagems such as rapid ingress, maybe. Maybe you just want to put this in, just be a bit of a nuisance for your opponent to deal with. Or tank shock. Tank shock is one of the newer ones as well. I quite like tank shock. You can be throwing out mortal wounds in your charge phase. Now our strength is strength 7, so that means you're going to be rolling 7 dice and you're going to get 2 additional ones if you're more than your opponent's toughness. So with your seven dice, any five plus rolls, the enemy unit will suffer a mortal wound. I think that's pretty cool. I do like that. Now we mentioned with all these stratagems that you can get a bit of a, a bit of a boost with the Necron stratagem. You can get a bit of a bonus if you've got a character leading the unit. And the only way to do that is a Sovereign Coronal Aura, which is an enhancement that you can put on one of your characters. Now the ideal one would be maybe a Hexmark Destroyer. You've also got the Technomancer potentially. Well, I think the hex mark is probably the better one, but he'll give you a plus one to your hit rolls. I mean, the particle shredder is already hitting on twos, but all the other weapons are going to be hit, get a plus one to the hit roll, and the stratagem does get a little boost as well. Other bits of synergy: you've got the Silent King. The Silent King has the Fair of the Stars aura, which is one of the options from the trial options you can use to be able to reroll hit rolls and wound rolls of a one. Not too bad. And the Canoptic Spider with the Fabricator Claw Array for vehicles to get a 6 plus 3 no pain save. And the Gloom Prism for a 4 plus 3 no pain save against psychic attacks. Could use that. Could use that. I mean, I'm not really that keen on the spiders at this moment. Maybe they make a comeback when the Codex does arrive. Right, Battlefield Roll Time. What are we doing with the Triumph Stalker? Not a lot, really. The Ranger Melee Assistance, I suppose. It's, it's not doing a massive amount of range work. And it's not doing a massive amount of melee work. But it is assisting. It's assisting... It's going to be removing cover, which I think is the main use. So be assisting others army wide. I mean, that's probably the same as the first bullet point, really, isn't it? You're assisting at range. You can sit and hold an objective because it is quite a resilient unit. I mean, it is tough. It's eight with 12 wounds and a four plus infam. That could help but get on an objective and make your opponent have to deal with it. And you can also do some scoring with secondaries. Now, I've put a little list here of some of the secondaries that you could do with the Triumph Stalker. So extend battle lines to get some objectives in the no man's land, defend stronghold if you just want to sit with your DZ, secure no man's land, that's very similar to extend battle lines and defend stronghold, a bit of both, engage on all fronts, yeah, could do one of the quarters, cleanse, maybe you want to do one of the actions, I don't really know about that one, and area denial, you can maybe remove some screen units or little action monkeys that are in the centre of the battlefield, and then you can get your unit on there and do area denial, there's some secondaries there, Maybe there's some other ones, but I don't think it's this strong suit of the Triumph Stalker. So let's get on to the pros and cons. There's not really much here for me to talk about. I mean, it's fairly tanky. It can shoot and fight. You've got the options of which weapon you're selecting, and you're removing cover for your army. Cool. As for cons, only four attacks in melee. It's got competition from a lot of units, and I'm, I say a lot of units. It's almost the entire codex or index is competing for the spot, so you're never really going to select it. I mean, if you're looking at the range side of it, you've got the Doomstalker as a cheap option. If you want to go a bit more expensive, you've got the Doomsday Arc. If you want to go infantry, you've got the Locust Heavy Destroyers, both different variants of them. The Locust Destroyers, the standard ones with the Gorse Cannons, they can do that kind of role. Annihilation Barges are a little bit of a tanky vehicle that can go around the battlefield doing what this does, in a way. So it's kind of, I say this quite often, but the Jack of Trades, Master of None, it's, it's like that. It's like that. Let's get on to the Planet 40k rating today. For the Triumph Stalker. Unfortunately, it's not a great one. I don't see it doing much and I don't select it often enough to well it doesn't it doesn't warrant a place then in my list. So I'm gonna go with a Planet for the K rating of two out of five stars. So guys, do you agree with my rating? Let me know down in the comments below and make sure you are subscribing on your exits. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.